Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of the morning reflections on the 99 names of Allah. Today, our session covers the names of Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and Ar-Ra'uf, names that are concerned with the aspect of mercy, compassion, and kindness. So with respect to these attributes of mercy and love, uh, out of all the attributes that Allah has, that Allah could emphasize to us and remind us of who Allah is and what Allah is marked by, uh, we, we see that Allah begins with these attributes of mercy and of compassion without fail, whether it's in revelation, whether it's in the beginning of any action or it's in any tradition, we see that the names of mercy and compassion are always at the forefront. And these attributes kind of serve like a first encounter. If, if we aren't too familiar with our Lord or if we come to first encounter Allah, oftentimes these are the names that are at that forefront. And uh, it's kind of like that first impression that we have. And as human beings, we know that first impressions are quite important. So what is our first impression of the one who created us, the one who brought us forth, the one who we may not know directly just like another human being, but the one who has brought all of this into existence, whom we serve, and the attributes that are not only led in the introduction, but are marked time and time again, are the ones of mercy and compassion. Just thinking about that, what is our impression of, uh, of Allah with those names? Similarly, uh, as we begin with the, the first two names in the, in, these, uh, in the beginning, you have Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. We see these names used time and time again in uh, the invocation of Bismillah Rahman Rahim when we begin to recite the Quran or any time we begin an action. And these names are uh, absolutely beautiful in that they share the same Arabic root that holds the rich meanings of tenderness, of mercy, of affection, sympathy, and compassion, and so much more. It's also noteworthy to note that uh, these uh, words, these, these names uh, of Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, their, their root has, uh, shares a, uh, it shares the root with the Arabic word for womb or for rahim, um, which comes from the same root. And so it's very interesting to draw that connection that uh, when we think about Allah's mercy, if we want to try and conceptualize it in, in our limited sense, knowing that we can't do justice to it, um, but thinking about how Allah's mercy uh, can be drawn and uh, can be akin to that mercy, that care, that nurturingness, that love that is provided for a unborn life or for a life that is in need that is still in the womb. Thinking about how tender that environment is, but how gentle that care must be. It can't be something that uh, is a care that is capricious or that is one that uh, is done uh, without any regard for the life within, but one that is concerned with safety uh, and with preservation. So thinking, uh, when, we think, when we think about this aspect of mercy, uh, it's not just something that is a reaction, but it's something that is also um, uh, proactive in a sense. So we have this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam that, that comes back again to this aspect of motherly love. He uh, sees a woman um, in the distance who is uh, searching for her child and um, she's clearly distressed and she finally comes upon the child and you know grabs the child and embraces him uh, and immediately begins to suckle the child because the child is also in duress. Um, and he asks his companions, he said that would any of them think that this mother could just rid herself of this child um, by putting the child back in harm's way. Uh, and they said, no, no, of course not. And he used that opportunity to show this motherly love, to give them that idea of what the maximum degree of love is that we're capable of, and to show that how Allah is even more merciful to uh, the creation of Allah, to humans, than this mother is to her child. So the intensity of that mercy, the force of that love, the gentleness of that affection that Allah is more. And it's no coincidence that uh, in the connection and exemplification, we see uh, this aspect of motherly love, not just in the root words and the connections and the connotations that we can see there, but also how the Prophet Sallallahu was trying to teach his companions how the mercy and love of Allah is something that is relatable and not something that is far off in the distance, that just as our mothers, our parents may be concerned 
for us and have that that love for us from the from the get go, but are concerned with our welfare. Allah is even more concerned about us, and just thinking about um, how significant that is, given who we are and who Allah is. Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim also, uh, with respect to their their meanings show us this aspect of uh, the different forms of mercy and how Allah manifests this mercy. In Ar-Rahman, you have this essential attribute. You have a word itself in Ar-Rahman that indicates something that's all-encompassing in its nature. It's something that's immediate. It's something that's expansive. It's like a state of being. Uh, Allah tells us that this state is one that's defined by all encompassing and overflowing mercy. It's a mercy that transcends anyone and anything. Uh, as Imam Ghazali says, this is a mercy that is all inclusive of all creation, all things that are under the sun um, and that, that Allah has, uh, has named out and has created uh, is included in this mercy. Uh, in the Quran, we see the verse that says, call upon Allah or call upon the most merciful. Um, these are interchangeable and it just shows us how central mercy is that we could call upon Allah or we could call upon Ar-Rahman and that this is interchangeable with the uh, penultimate name of Allah and it shows us how central that, that mercy is. Is. And on the other side, we have Ar-Rahim, which complements this all-encompassing and immediate mercy with a mercy that is far-reaching, but also direct and a specific manifestation. Think about a wide open sky on a beautiful day that is Ar-Rahman in a sense, this, this name, this aspect of mercy that's all-encompassing, it's all available, nice sunny day. And uh, Ar-Rahim is that direct ray of sunlight that hits you when you're outside and makes you feel warm and it, it, it makes it specific to you uh, or that cloud that comes above your head and helps provide shade to you that it is a specific form of mercy uh, a mercy that the Quran lifts up for the believers for those who do good deeds for those who are repentant all such and so forth that they're specific individuals and things that Allah highlights within this aspect of Rahmah whom Allah gives an additional mercy to. And this name is often paired with Al-Ghafur, the forgiving, as well as Al-Ra'uf, which we'll discuss in a second here, the kind, to show that this mercy is not just something that uh, is alien to any other attribute, but it's one that spills over and spills with forgiveness and is marked with kindness and is something very rich and wholesome. Al-Ra'uf uh, is the next name here that concerns for uh, that is lifted up in a sense, the one that is the kind, the, the loving, the concerned, but uh, Ar-Rauf is the one who's concerned with the welfare of others, that takes pity upon other individuals and creation. Um, this attribute has empathy and compassion, much like an intensified version of Ar-Rahim, uh, that not only is that ray of sunshine coming to you through Ar-Rahim, but now that ray of sunshine is connecting you to see what is, what is wrong, what is what can it do to help you out, and how, where are you, and how can that ray uh, help make your day better? How can Allah meet you where you are? Um, that It shows us that Allah has a concern about the welfare of us and our creation, as well as our journeys, despite the fact we have the differences of who we are and who Allah is, there is still that attribute of Allah that shows that concern for each and every single one of us is at the forefront of, uh, of what Allah is uh, concerned with. You have this aspect of Rafa, uh, which is kindness versus Rahma, this mercy. Um, and the example of, that we can lift up here, when we think about mercy and this kindness of Ar-Rahman and Ar-Ra'uf or Ar-Rahim and Ar-Ra'uf is you have uh, in a sense, when, when parents are giving their children medicine, um, when parents are giving their children medicine or caring for them, uh, they can, out of mercy, give them, uh, you know, some medicine that doesn't taste that good. But it, we know that that medicine is good for the child in the long run, but the child might be taking this medicine and be like, oh, this tastes terrible, or this, this, uh, this whole ordeal is, is terrible. Um, but it's still, it's merciful. You know, the child may not see it, but the parent is helping to take care of them. The uh, that is the uh, rahma, that is the mercy. But a ra'uf, the ra'fa that comes in, the kindness is when the parent holds up that child, the parent uh, sits with that child and empathizes. That, I know it doesn't taste good, but hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. 
uh, we're going to be sitting here together. We're going to get together. We're going to do something nice afterwards. There's some reward after this or uh, being with that child that's there, showing us that we matter. Uh, Imam Kushayri says that Rafa is the highest form of mercy where Allah protects the servants and refers only to the acts that are manifestly compassionate and kind. It's a, uh, you know, in, in this aspect of uh, having mercy, but uh, you, you, you can't really separate this kindness from it. So Rafa is this kindness that, that defines this, this mercy and adds even more to it. So as we close out here, inshallah, what are some implications for us and how do we live with this name? Um, there's this intense focus that is in our tradition, in the book of Allah and from Allah directly of how mercy uh, is, uh, is not just an attribute of Allah, but it's something that should define our relationship with Allah. That mercy, compassion, kindness, these are not just quote where the elements are just something that is really cool to tweet or to Instagram about, but these are things that define our relationship with Allah. We might not have mercy, compassion, love or kindness in the other relationships in our in our life, especially with our parents, but we have that as a guarantee with Allah that we just need to open our eyes to it. And not just in the reading of the Quran, but in following the path of the ones who are also sent as mercies to us. Uh, we know that in the Quran, Allah says, especially in the verse concerning Ramadan, that Allah does not desire hardship for us, but ease thinking, how does this mercy play out? So when we want to live with this name, first and foremost, as with all the other attributes, we want to apply them. We want to have mercy on others. We want to, uh, we want to, you know, be not just ones who are shown mercy, uh, but we want to also be those who are showing mercy to other people. The Prophet says in a hadith that those who show mercy will be shown mercy. So we've talked about this, that when you see a 99 name, when you're uh, trying to learn and preserve a 99 name or a name of Allah, you can't just memorize it. You have to be transformed by it. And as such, we have to have mercy on others if we wish to be shown mercy. Number two, we want to learn the things that bring about this mercy, that bring about this kindness, being kind, praying at night, uh, being charitable, sacrificing from that which we love, attributes that are lifted up by uh, Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu of how Allah reveals this mercy to specific individuals and brings about this mercy. Number three, increasing the mercy in our heart being active in the community, being active with those who are, uh, who are on the margins, being kind to other people and giving back to the community, not isolating ourselves from them. Number four, following the one who was sent as rahmata lil alameen, the mercy to all the worlds, looking into the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi not just as a storybook character, but as someone who is genuinely sent, as the Quran said, not sent, but accept as a mercy. So how do we derive that mercy? How, how is mercy derived from the life and the example of the Prophet ﷺ? And lastly, reflecting upon the manifestations of mercy in our life, when things were taken away from us or things were provided, how does mercy play a role for us? So inshallah, as we close out today, we ask Allah to be the merciful, to be the kind, to be the compassionate, but also to allow us to see uh, and to open our eyes to this mercy, not only to be able to be um, accepted of it and to be receptive to it, but to be individuals that subsequently show this to other people. Inshallah, until our next session tomorrow, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.